Again, I just want to welcome you here to Faith and joining us for Circle of Nations. We do this once a year, and it is no ordinary service where we get to celebrate the colors and flavors and cultures of God's diverse kingdom and, and his family. Amen? And I want, to, uh, I want to just tell you that at one point in the history of our church, the leadership of our church, they looked around our city and said, you know, there's all kinds of newcomers coming from all over the world to this place in Vancouver, and if we don't welcome them, then who is going to welcome them? And so a, a congregation that was predominantly white and Caucasian, they said, we can't be a white church anymore. We gotta let everyone come in. We gotta open our doors to the nations. And so the church decided, the leadership said, let's pray and learn what it means to be a welcoming church to all peoples. And so if you look around today, you are seeing the realization of that vision that our church had years ago. And to demonstrate this, I'm going to name a continent of the world. And, I, and if you are from that area of the world, I want you to give your loudest, proudest shout of joy, okay? Uh, so anyone here from South America... That was anticlimactic. Okay, let me try that again. Is anyone here from South America? Oh, thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay, I expected a little bit more from South America, but we'll, we'll give you another chance. Okay, who here is from the Middle East? Okay. All right. Who here is from Africa? Come on. Yes, I, I, that's what I thought. How about from Europe? Hey, okay, okay. How about anyone from Asia? Yeah, oh yeah, okay. Who here is from the Oceania Islands? Oceania, okay, Fiji, come on. Fiji, we got Fiji here. Yes, yes. How about uh, North America? Yeah, okay, uh, North America. Anyone here from Antarctica? Okay, I had to make sure. You never know who you're going to meet on a Sunday morning. Today, I have the privilege of wearing my Korean traditional clothing. If you haven't noticed, this isn't my regular attire as a pastor, but uh, I'm so honored because my mother-in-law, who is here, she gifted this to me and my father-in-law on the day that I married my wife, who is Korean. So I'm... Uh, not usually wearing pink, but today is a special day. Uh, as you know, uh, if this is your first Circle of Nations, just to give you an idea of what's happening after the service, we are going to be having a flag parade. So as soon as I'm done my message, uh, we're going to be having a flag parade. So there's going to be flags going through the ceremony, and then outside we're going to do a perimeter of our entire property as a church, and we're going to communicate to our community the unity that we have in Jesus. So uh, I encourage you to be a part of that. If you don't know what's going on, just follow someone who does, okay? And you're going to be okay. Uh, after the flag ceremony, we're all going to congregate on the grass outside, just out front. And there's going to be someone on the roof of our church taking a photo of us as a group, okay? So uh, at one point, you just need to look up, and we'll take a big group photo together. Everyone with me? Okay. Praise God. Uh, before we go into this feast of food, there's going to be a, a whole bunch of food from all over the world in the parking lot that we are going to feast on, but I do want to provide some spiritual nourishment for us uh, as we prepare ourselves for that feast. Would you stand with me as we read scripture from God's word today? Genesis chapter 12, 1 to 3, and it should be on the screen. Let's read it together. The Lord had said to Abram, Leave your native country, your relatives, and your father's family, and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous, and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who treat you with contempt. All the families on earth will be blessed through you. Amen? You can take a seat. So what started with one man's family, one individual man, 
and a calling on his life grew into a collection of people that would become the nation of Israel. And it was through that unique nation and through the lineage of the Jewish people that the Savior of the world would be born onto this earth. The Messiah, Jesus Christ, who lived a sinless, perfect life and died in our place for our sins on the cross and rose three days later. What began as a handful of Christians in Jerusalem grew through terrible persecution to eventually become the national religion of the Roman Empire. And through the work of missionaries has reached the four corners of this earth. I'll never forget traveling to the South Pacific Islands. And I was on the island of Fiji And I was on an outer island, and I walked around a big bend. We were out in the middle of nowhere, and I turned around, and there was a church on a foreign island in the middle of the South Pacific. There was a church. I'll never forget flying into South Korea, and as I before landing in Seoul, seeing a sea of red crosses around the city that represented churches If you were to go back to your home country right now, you would be able to find a church. Amen? You would find a group of Christians. You may not be able to find a physical building, but you would be able to find a group of people who are followers of Yahweh. Christians who have been saved by the blood of the Lamb and who are followers of Jesus Christ. We, church, are living in the fulfilled promise of God's promise to Abraham. Just look around today. The gospel has traveled to the entire earth, to the four corners of this earth. And so I want you to turn to one another right now and say, you are blessed. Let's do that. You are blessed. And I want to tell you, I want to remind you why you are blessed. Because sometimes we can get so discouraged, we can forget the promises of God. But I want to remind you one thing today, church, and that is that we are blessed people. We're a blessed people. And I was looking at this, you know, when you look at any other religion, the systems of this world, It takes the shape of an N. I want to put the letter N on the screen for you just to illustrate what I mean by this. Every other religion, every system of this world requires sacrifice for blessing. It requires us to do a good work, a good sacrifice, and give it up to God, whoever that God would be in each religion. And if that God was able to be acceptable from that sacrifice, they would then come down and bless you with the thing that you need, whether it be childbearing or a job or prosperity financially. Everything follows this pattern. I do something, some kind of effort, some kind of work, I give it to God and if he accepts it, then it comes back down and I receive the blessing. And then if I need it again, I do the same thing. I offer something up to God, and he, if he accepts it, brings it back down. I want to show you, though, the U-shape. Because if you understand this, this will transform your view of who God is. Because when God made a promise to Abraham, he said, I will make you into a great nation. This is regardless of your performance. This is regardless of how well you behave. This is something that God initiated from on high and he brought down to us. And when he brings it down as a gift, we receive it as a gift and we offer it back up to him in worship and in praise. Do you see the difference? The faith that we have Church, the blessings that we have is not achieved, it is received. Amen? The blessing that you get to experience through Christ is not something that you achieve by your own merit and by your faithfulness. The gospel tells us that faith and salvation is something that we receive and then we offer back in worship. Amen? So I want to just give us three things that I want to remind you of this morning, and that is three blessings that we need to be aware of. The three things are belonging, purpose, and a future. These things are so lacking in our 
culture in our city. And if we really grab a hold of these three things, we're going to experience what it means to be blessed. So the first blessings that we get to receive as people from all nations and tribes and tongues is a sense of belonging. And belonging is something that we all desire in our hearts. We all have this intrinsic need to be accepted and seen and loved for who we are. We all long to be seen and to be known. We will spend our lives searching for that sense of belonging, that sense of being seen and known. And the gospel tells us that through Jesus Christ, God looks at you and I and he says, I see you and I know you and I love you. Ephesians 2, 19. Let's look at this together. So now you Gentiles, which is everyone else other than Jewish people, are no longer strangers and foreigners. You are citizens along with all of God's holy people. You are members of God's family. Together, we are his house, built on the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. And the cornerstone is Jesus Christ himself. We are carefully joined together in him, becoming a holy temple for the Lord. And through him, you Gentiles are also being made part of this dwelling where God lives by his spirit. Wow. I remember when I was a youth pastor and I was getting to know all of these young kids and I remember talking to this young girl and she was sharing with me her family history. I don't know if you've ever done a family tree before where you've laid out all of your relatives on paper, but this young girl wanted me to know the complexity of her family story. And so she said, here are my, my biological parents at the top, and then they separated, and here's their new partners, and here they had these children, and then they split up, and then they have these new partners. And eventually, as I was watching her draw out this family tree, I was, my heart began to break because I realized that her family was so fractured and broken how can there be a sense of identity and belonging when there is so much brokenness in your family but I remember in that moment God reminded me of this passage and I said thank you for sharing this with me can I tell you about what it means to be part of God's family and I erased everything that she wrote down and I put God, the Father, at the top. And I said, here is your name right underneath. When you become a follower of Jesus, when you receive the Holy Spirit, you become part of this family. You were adopted into this family where God is now your Father, who will never leave you and never forsake you. There is a sense of belonging that you can have, an identity in Christ. And this is the beauty of what it means to be a church because you and I have been blot by the blood of the Lamb. We have the Holy Spirit living inside of us. And so when we interact with one another, the Spirit of God in me and the Spirit of God in you connects to each other. And there can be a sense of God's presence, even in our gathering, even in our conversation, because something supernatural has happened within our lives. We can experience this sense of belonging with one another. Even though we are so diverse, we are so different, we can experience that sense of belonging. And this means that we can have honesty and transparency with one another, when we see people for who they are and know them for who they are, we can be known and we can be loved. So the first thing that we receive as a blessing from God is belonging. The second one I want to talk about is purpose. Purpose. Acts chapter 2, verse 42 to 44. This is what happened after the first believers came together after receiving the Holy Spirit. It says, all the believers devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship and to sharing in meals, including the Lord's Supper, and to prayer. And awe came upon every soul, 
and many wonders and signs were being done through the apostles. And all who believed were together and had all things in common. I love this verse. How can it be that a group so diverse can have everything in common? Does that mean that we all have the same personality? That we all have the same preferences? That we all like to eat the same food and dress the same? No. What do we have in common? Our common salvation in Jesus. When that is your foundation, when that is the ground that you build your life on, then you and I can have everything that matters in common. Their unity as a church was in their common purpose. And in the early church, the early church was being accused of many different things. They were, they were accused of having orgies because they that they heard about these love feasts that were happening among Christians that simply meant that they were just sharing a meal, sharing life together. The early Christians were being accused of practicing cannibalism because they were eating the body and drinking the blood of Jesus Christ. See, they were standing out within the culture. And people were taking notice of what was happening in society. In the early church, the poor were neglected. In that culture, the orphans and widows were ignored. Newcomers were treated as outsiders. But the early church began to see the need around them and they began to care for the poor, the orphans and the widows. And they received the newcomer in as welcome guests. The church always is a subculture within the culture. When you and I enter into relationship with Jesus, we enter into a new family, a new system of belief. We are calling the city back to their God. And we will stand out. When you and I gather on a Sunday, we are not simply just occupying a space. We are making an invisible reality of the kingdom of God physically real. When you go into some, each other's homes and open the Bible and pray with one another, you are manifesting the kingdom of God in this city. And when we serve the poor and when we are active in our community, we are the hands and feet of Jesus. We can have a purpose for our lives and for our church. And this is one of the blessings that we get to receive through Jesus Finally, I want to tell you about our common future. Revelation 7, 9 and 10. It says, After this I saw a vast crowd, too great to count, from every tribe, from every nation and tribe and people and language, standing in front of the throne and before the Lamb. They were clothed in white robes and held palm branches in their hands. And they were shouting with a great roar, Salvation comes from our God who sits on the throne and from the Lamb. See, there will come a day, church, where we will stand before the throne of God. And every tribe, tongue, and nation, you will look around and you will see the nations gathered. And who will be the focus of attention? Jesus. The longings that you and I have for community, for belonging, for purpose. Everything will be satisfied in that moment as we gaze upon the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus will be at the center and we will experience for the first time peace and unity. And so today, we are practicing. This is a rehearsal of what is to come. We may experience belonging on this side of heaven, but we will still want more. You may have purpose in your life, but you will experience that there is something more that I don't have. And as believers of Jesus Christ, we know that there is a future secured ahead of us. And so we live our lives in reverse. We live our lives knowing of what is to come. Even though there is war 
and conflict and hurt in this world, we can have peace because we know one day we will stand before Jesus face to face. I'm gonna invite the worship team to come forward as we worship before the throne together. Why are these three words important for us today? Belonging, purpose, future? Because they're so lacking in our day. Many people feel lonely and isolated and don't experience that sense of belonging. What would it look like to be part of a church, to be part of a community where you walked in and you immediately felt known and seen and were loved for who you are? In our culture that is so distracted, we need to remind people that they have a purpose for their life, that their life is not random, that there is something special that you and I have put on this earth to do and that we as a church have a mission to fulfill as we wait for the return of Jesus. And in a world that is filled with fear and anxiety, people need to know that there is hope and a bright future ahead of them. This is the message that we get to tell people about what we believe. I want to put the vision statement of our church on the screen for you. If you are new to our church, this is our vision. This is why we operate and do the things we do. Our vision is to be a place of belonging where people of all nations find purpose and growth in Jesus Christ. If you're here today, you're looking for belonging, purpose, and a future. Come to the feet of Jesus. Receive his life and his forgiveness. And join with us as we rehearse for the things that are to come as Jesus returns and all of our longings are fulfilled in his presence. I want to remind you that, again, that following this song, we are going to have a flag parade. And if you were involved in the flag parade at all, you can head out right now and grab your flag. It doesn't need to be your nation's flag. You can grab any flag. And we are going to celebrate the unity that we have in Jesus. Once the flag parade is complete, we will congregate in the front where we will take a picture. And from there, we welcome you to come and walk around and eat some food from all over the world. Uh, I will ask you that you please take a sample of the food. Please try not to load up on that plate. I know it's going to be hard, but just take a little sample. And if there's more, you can come back and get more food once you've had your first. So let me pray, and we're going to offer all of these things back up to him in worship.